Hey everyone, section 417, you are almost done. We are going to be talking about indicators. You've used them a couple times in the titrations that we've done. Indicators basically change color at a certain range, and there are a lot of different types of indicators, and I'm going to give you just an introduction to them on this video in the next few minutes, then we'll go into a bit more detail about them in class tomorrow and in groups. In a nutshell, an indicator consists of two things. It consists of a weak acid and its conjugate base, its, its pair. The indicators that are very broad, I'm just going to use the symbols IND for indicator. So HIND is the weak acid, or the acid form of the indicators, and the base form is IND minus, it's conjugate base, it differs by an H plus. What makes indicators so special is that the weak acid and the weak base have different colors. This could be yellow, and this could be blue. So whatever form is dominant, that's the color that you see. If you have more HI and D, then you will be yellow. If you have more I and D minus, then you will be blue. So this right here is the fundamental idea of today. This is an indicator, period. An indicator is an equilibrium mixture between a weak acid and its conjugate base that are different colors. So this is a weak acid ionizing in water to produce H3O plus and its conjugate base, which is IND. And the weak acid and its conjugate base are different colors. In this case, yellow and red. If you have more IND minus, if you've shifted this thing left, then you are going to be yellow. If you shift this thing right, then you are going to be red. So whatever way this indicator is shifted, that's the color that you see. So let's look at that in a bit more detail. One more thing. If you are 100% in the middle, so you're not shifted left and you're not shifted right, you're exactly in the middle, you have equal parts, yellow and red, then you will be orange. Okay, welcome to elementary school with the primary and secondary colors. Yellow and red make orange. So you're yellow if you've shifted way left, you're red if you've shifted way right, and if you're exactly in the middle, then you are orange. And that's a special uh, scenario which we'll get to later called the transition point. So, how do you shift these things left or right? Well again, here is our overall indicator. H-I-N-D, I-N-D minus. If we add an acid, we increase the concentration of H3O. It's going to shift left to undo our change, and this thing is going to dominate. We're going to make more of that, and it's going to turn that color. Maybe it's yellow. If I can shift this thing right, then I will. Well, how do I do that? Well, to shift it right, I need to add a base. When I add a base, H3O plus is going to decrease in concentration, and equilibrium is going to shift right to make more of it, and in essence, make more HIND minus, which will be red. So when I add a base, it's going to turn red, because equilibrium is shifting right. So we have a list of indicators, and we can figure out what colors they are at different pHs. So if you look on your indicator chart in your data booklet, you probably don't have that in front of you, so I'm just going to pretend you're looking for that right now. If you look up Brom Kressel Green, you're going to see it as an um, acid form and a base form. Um, you're going to see it uh, on one side of the chart at a certain range of a pH and the other side on a uh, certain pH. So if you had a drop of HCl, the acid form of that indicator is going to be present. Okay, And it says in the chart it's going to be yellow. If you add a base, NaOH, well then the base form of the indicator is going to be present and that chart tells us that it's blue. So the acid form of Brom Kressel Green is yellow. The base form of Brom Kressel Green is blue. And what's exactly halfway? Well, yellow and blue makes green. Your kindergarten teacher will be very proud of you. Okay? There's literally 12 indicators that we're just going to be playing around with. What's the acid form? What's the color of that? What's the base form? And what's the color of that? What's in the middle is, is your mixture.
that middle point, like I said 30 seconds ago, has a very specific name. It's called the transition point. The transition point is when you have equal parts, acid form and base form of the indicator. And that's molarities. The concentrations of those are the same. So if you look up on your acid base chart for methyl violet, brom crestal green, and indigo carmine, you will see they're all yellows and blues. And halfway between a yellow and blue will be green. So 99% of our questions will be looking at colors. What color is methyl violet in an acidic solution with that certain pH? What color is brom crestal green in a certain pH? And what color is indigo carmine in a certain pH? But there's unfortunately one kicker. It's never as simple as you always think it's going to be. There's one little special scenario that can occur. If you were to write out a Ka expression, which you can because this is a weak acid, Ka's are products over reactants, coefficients are exponents, and you ignore liquids and solids. Well, if IND equals HIND, you can cancel those off from your expression. When you cancel those off from your expression, you get Ka equals H3O. Well, that's just weird. Where am, I, where am I going with this? Well, at the transition point of an indicator, the Ka equals the concentration of H3O. Well, we know this number. Okay? This molarity can be calculated, which means we can now calculate the Ka's of indicators. So, we're going to do that. We're going to actually not do that on the video. We're going to do that in class tomorrow because I want to repeat this. You can calculate the Ka of an indicator. So we are going to stop right here. Make sure you understand that indicators are equilibrium mixtures of weak acids and weak bases with different colors. You can shift that equilibrium left and right and that is what changes the color and that's the color that you see. That's the end of that section there ladies and gentlemen. We'll see everyone tomorrow.